Welcome back. In the last video, we managed to import this audio file. And in this video, I promised that we're going to chop it up into small pieces so we can use every single individual note from the first note, which is going to be C1 all the way up to C7. So let's do that. We managed to get um, up here after we loaded. And if we don't get an error, we will go and initialize the sound engine. So that is a new object that I created here. And uh, let's take the file and let's chop it up into smaller parts right here. So first of all, I'm going to remove this because we already know that it works. And um, I am going to think a little bit about this because how can we do this? First of all, we need to know the distance between every single note. We also need to know what the first note is and what the last note is. Um, and I happen to know that there's exactly 2.4 seconds between every single note. So from when one note begins until the next one starts, that will be 2.4 seconds or 2,400 milliseconds. Uh, and we're going to use milliseconds because that is the unit that you use for time in uh, JavaScript and also in Howler.js. So because I know that there's 2.4 seconds between these, I can go back to my code and um, let's first of all type that out. I know length of note is equal to 2400. So that is the milliseconds. So now I have that in a constant. I also know that we will start from, from zero. So we will start from right here, which is uh, zero. So let's go back and let's... Uh, Let's make a variable and let's call it, let's call it time index. And let's set that equal to zero to begin with here. Um, so what we're going to do is every time that we have reached 2400, we are going to add that to this time index. So it goes to the, to the next, to the next one here and then the next one here. So every time we are from zero to 2400, we are going to add 2,400 to 2,400, which is, what is that, 4,800, something like that. And we're going to keep going and going and going until we reach the last one in um, all the way up here. So how are we going to do that? Um, a for loop would be pretty nice, but it would also be pretty nice to have a number to refer to. If you remember in one of the previous videos, we talked about that we could get the MIDI number for a note. And we know that the first note here is uh, C1. So I also know that the MIDI number for C1 is 24. So if we can refer to the notes that we get from Howler.js, that we get from this piano sprite, then it'll be much easier for us to actually refer to that note. So let's start the for loop. And let's set... I, I'm going to set it equal to 24 because as I just said, we know that C1 is, has the MIDI number 24. Um, and another thing that we know is that 96 is the number of the last note. So 96 is the MIDI number of the C7. So we have all the way from 24, which is the MIDI number for C1. So that's C in the first octave and all the way to C7, which has the MIDI number of 96. Um, so we're going to do that for each and every single note. And I'm going to increment I. So what we're going to do right here is first we're going to take that sound and I'm going to tell Howler that we want to work with the sound sprite. So I'm going to talk about sprite like this and I'm going to take I here because that is the number that is the sprite number 24 sprite number 25 all the way up to 96 and I'm gonna tell it that I want that to be equal to time index so this is where we want to chop up the file where we want to begin and where we want to end so we want to start the first time we do it we want to start from zero so that's what time index is and then we want to stop it at uh, after 2.4 seconds. So that's 2400. And I can uh, 
type length of note because we already have that in a variable up here. And then all we have to do here is just increment the time index by the length of the note, which is 2.4 seconds, so 2,400 milliseconds. So I'm going to go time index plus equal length of note. And then the next time we're going to go through it, it's going to be sprite number 25. And that will start at not at zero. It will start at 2,400 because we just added that down here. And then it'll have the length of node, which is still 2,400. And every single time this loop runs, it'll add 2,400, uh, the length of the node to it and split it up. So that's basically it. That's, that's how we do this. So let's just test and see if that works. And how we do that is we already have the sound defined, but now it's split up into many different uh, parts, even though it's still the same sound file. So we can refer to that by running the play method. And we can pass it a string of the number that we want it to play. And we already know that 24 is the first number, the first note. Um, so let's try and save this and see what happens. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the C in the first octave. Let's try to take the next one. Well, let's try to take number 26. And that would be a D. So we can try and take, what should we try? Let's try a 48. Yep. And that's simply how it works. We can just access the different sounds, the different notes in the sound sprite by passing in the, um, the number but as a string. And we're going to use that in the next video where we will make another method that will run and play the chord when we click on one of the chord buttons here. So join me in the next video for that.